without Leno. I know, I see I'm on. All the TVs are out. I've been on hold with the cable company for over 30 minutes. Look at you, got a date? Oh, you don't have to tell me. <laughs> Where? Antonio's. Oh, their salmon ravioli is to die. I know, my reservations are in exactly 22 minutes if they don't pick up. You've never dealt with our cable company before, have you? No. Who are you calling? Antonio's to cancel your reservation. Oh, you got to do this. Snap your fingers. And I'll go run. I ain't lying. Oh, what you want? Little boy, you know you got it. I deny myself before I see you without it. Didn't I tell you she's amazing? She's very good. She just signed a major record deal. And if you want to come down and see her four nights in a row, that's fine with me. I'm just saying. She's amazing. She's very good. I gotta pee. Hey, I've been busting the nurse's station. My TV. I know your TV isn't working, and we're on it. So uh, in the meantime, why don't you just read a magazine? My roommate snores. TV is the only thing that drowns it out. I swear to God, I'll need to change rooms if you don't... Hey, Melora, do you have any earplugs on your cart? Wax and foam. There you go. Try these, Fernando. And here's your Forbes magazine. Thanks, Mel. Thanks, Melora. <laughs> Melora, you're a godsend. Something pretty for you to look at when they're complaining. Thank you. Yeah. Mr. Orloff, where'd you get it? Minivan one, pedestrian zero. A few bruises and lacerations, but his x-rays look okay. And you need me because? Temps 103. So what's that all about? Just when you think you've seen everything. I give up. Wings. <gasps> right down to the feathers. <sighs> I guess he flew a little too close to the sun. before. 
cranial ridges, scales, but wings. Wow. Poor guy probably paid a lot of money for those as well. What are they? Saline, I guess. You know, same idea as breast implants. Some people can spot fake boobs. I can always tell the wings you have when I see one. <laughs> Listen, could you call me with the scan results? There's a lot of fluid there. Those things are going to have to come off tonight. Kellerman. Uh, Paul, what are you doing in the men's locker room? Oh, what do you have there? This? This is a marijuana cigarette. A joint? A fatty? A doobie? Hey, watch it, bud. You're dating yourself there. Hmm. I've long had my suspicions. Strange odors emanating from patients' rooms. Patients who, surprisingly enough, have only one thing in common. Uh -huh. You. Me? You. Are you sure that is, in fact, a marijuana? Please stay out of this, Dr. Delgetti. I know contraband when I see it. It's just that, I mean, I've seen my share over the years, and that, may I? Yeah, you see, to me, that smells of oregano. What? Oregano, whatever. Oregano. Yeah, whatever. Oh, yeah, pizza yeah. coffee. Give yeah. it back. So there's only one way to be absolutely sure. That is evidence in an ongoing investigation. All right, okay. Oh, 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 hey, who, who, got a light? You wouldn't dare. Ooh, ooh, varsity field hockey. I lettered. No, Dr. Pooh. What? He's getting away. <gasps> Cheers. This is not over, Kellerman. Not by a long shot. Hey, gorgeous. What can I do for you? you do any more for me, we're both gonna be in big trouble. Oh, bring it on. I can't. They got rules about this sort of thing in the workplace. Never met a rule I didn't break. Hey, certain people find out you're gonna lose your job. I'm a volunteer. Of the highest order, but you gotta chill now, really. Nurse Dr. Poole is freaking out. Speaking of management. Head down. Ass tight. Name, rank, and serial number. Here we go. I'm sorry, folks. That's it for me for now. Thank you. You've been here before. Yeah, four times. <laughs> I'm, I'm Maggie. I just wanted to say that you're really amazing. Well, the guy you were with walked out. A uh, small bladder. Oh. <laughs> Which is physiologically unrelated to the size of anything else. Matt Posner. Hi. Hi. You are <laughs> phenomenal. <laughs> just incredible. <clears throat> you, should, um, you should probably get that checked out. Oh, doctors and I don't get along. Anyway, it's just strained. Well, you don't normally get a deep cough like that from a strained voice, so it's probably a bronchial infection. How long have you had it? About six weeks. Well, we can throw some antibiotics at it, and it'll probably be gone in a week. You're a doctor? We're residents over at the Mesh. Oh. You know, it's easy to get it checked out. If you, um, if you want to come by tomorrow, I can, I can personally walk you through it. This is only going to help, so. Dr. Maggie Yang. <laughs> <laughs> joint? What joint? What? Did you see a joint? I, I, I don't see a joint. It was destroyed by you and your partner in crime. Did you give the patient a joint? I advised the patient of cannabis' ability to reduce nausea and increase appetite. Yes, I did. You see, he's admitting he prescribed it. Is someone getting this on tape? And I'm backed by California state law. We know the law, Dr. Kellerman. Well, that's good, Frank. Did you explain that to Nurse Ratchet here? I resent that. And I resent your uncaring attitude toward patients. How dare you? I am a patient advocate. Really? Which hospital? Go to your corners. Dr. Kellerman, it may be legal to tell your patient about cannabis, however, it is not legal to supply them with it. Especially on hospital grounds. Okay, all right. Let's just keep them hopped up on morphine. You're preaching to the converted. If you didn't supply Mr. Orloff with the marijuana, then you know who did. And if I did, you're expecting me to tell you who this person is? I don't think so. Shelly, that's a lovely dress. Well, that was effective. I have bigger problems right now. 
The entire cable system needs to be rewired. You're not going to follow up, ask, ask questions of the patient at Delgetti or the other nurses on the floor? We will, certainly. I mean, I mean when this cable problem no. is, I mean, in the future? No, apparently not. Sorry, uh, sorry. Okay. All right. Well, like with most things, if you want something done right, you have to do it yourself. Charlie Shine. Heart catheter. He's only 12 years old. Is that absolutely necessary? Only if you want him to live. Is he a nice kid? I was joking. That was a joke. You do have a sense of humor, don't you, Dr. Joyner? Not when it comes to my patient's health. Look, this doesn't have to be a hostile exchange, OK? As the on-site representative of Sutro Medical, I'm just trying to manage some costs here. And my superiors are on the warpath to make sure that all inpatient care is absolutely necessary. Okay, just work with me here. I don't keep patients, Mr. Danga, unless I feel it is absolutely necessary. Excellent, that's great. I wish I had more doctors like you. I've got an oncologist here, and I'm not gonna name names, but she's had a patient in treatment for over three weeks. Now, clearly, it's not working. And I say to her, I say, Dr. Burton, maybe Mr. Orloff would be more comfortable in a hospice, and then she looks at me like I'm the bad guy. Like, I'm responsible, this guy's got cancer. I don't know, are you? No, of course not. How could I be responsible for that? It was a joke. You got me. That was good. I made a joke, you made a joke. See, we've been collegial now. This can be fun. Shall we continue? Hey, Doc. Mr. Plotkin? Joe. Guess I sort of lost my footing on the curb. That'll be the fever. Could you sit up, please? You have a buildup of fluid around your implants. It's a serious infection. You can treat that, though, right? By removing them. Look, um, <laughs> I've spent the past 18 months on the balance of my 401k to have this done. Who performed the surgery? Guy in Mexico City. Uh, this is the third set. I've been gradually going with larger implants as my skin stretches. Originally, I envisioned them huge, but I kind of like them the way they are right now. Hey, what do you think? I think you're endangering your life over something that's cosmetic. You know, if we were talking about an organ or a limb... No, no, but for me, that's that's exactly what we're talking about. Listen, Dr... Talgetti. I know it might seem strange, but... Well, they make me feel complete. Complete? Yeah, like they were always supposed to be there. <laughs> I don't have a death wish. I, I'm just asking that you explore everything to try to save them all. All right. We'll continue with the antibiotics and we'll watch you closely, but if your condition doesn't improve in the next 24 hours, we are going to have to come off. I have faith it won't come to that. Nothing wrong with a positive attitude. Thanks. So, as you can see, Mr. Orloff, they have uh, spacious rooms and, uh, and beautiful grounds and... Uh, perfectly adequate hospice staff to deal with your every need. Do you not feel like talking right now? Hi. <laughs> Where's Poole? Mr. Dunga. Fancy meeting you here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just came in to uh, get to the bottom of this marijuana mess. Oh, yes. Uh, I was uh, just discussing the benefits of less expensive hospice care. Oh, it was very thoughtful of you. Are you doing something different with your hair? Well, it's getting kind of long. It's flipping up a little bit. <laughs> it's uh, bewitching. Thank you. Yeah. I was uh, thinking of getting it cut. Maybe no, I won't. No, it's kind of a <laughs> thing. It's... Mr. Orloff, do you need some time to think about this? Mr. Orloff has widespread metastases. He's undergoing an immunotherapy protocol and high-dose chemo. The last thing he needs is McGruff the crime dog and Simon Legree circling his bed. There's Paul. Wounds to the chest. She's tacking at 110. DP 90 over 60 with decreased bilateral chest sound. 